Hi, welcome to the video solutions to the Corporate Miles Practice Questions on Bearings. In this video, we're going to focus on the video solutions to the practice questions, but if you need any extra help on bearings, if you go to Corporate Maths and go down to the videos and worksheets section and scroll down to video number 26, there's video tutorials there on bearings. Alternatively, you could scan this QR code. But in this video, we're going to focus on the video solutions to the practice questions, so let's get started. Okay, so question number one. Question number one says, this is a map of an island. So we've got a map of this island and we've got Lee, Castletown, Bilton, Foxville and Dunhampton. We've got this scale. It says that one centimetre represents 10 miles. And one thing I want to mention in this uh, video is that I've printed these practice questions off on my printer at home. Whenever you've printed them off on your printer, there might be a slightly different scaling. So whenever we're measuring the lengths of lines, there might be some slight differences, but that's just one thing I wanted to mention. And then we're told a helicopter flies in a straight line from Leek to Dunhampton and we're asked how far does a helicopter fly? So let's get a ruler and pencil and let's join up Leek and Dunhampton. So let's get ruler and pencil and join up Leek and Dunhampton, like so. So we've joined up Leek and Dunhampton and now it says how far does the helicopter fly? So let's measure the length of that line. So we've got zero centimeters at the beginning and whenever I measure the length of the line, it's 14, there's 14 and a half, that's 14.4. So 14.4 centimeters. That's the length of my line on my page. And we're asked how far does it fly, the helicopter? And obviously it's not 14.4 centimeters because each centimeter represents 10 miles. So if it was one centimeter, then it would be 10 10 miles, two centimeters, 20 miles, and so on. So if we multiply the number of centimeters, the 14.4 by 10, that'll tell us how many miles it would be. So if we take our 14.4 to 14.4, and we multiply that by 10, that'll move all the digits one column to the left, so that'll be 144. So our answer is 144 miles. That's the distance from Lake to Donhampton. And just to recap, we measured the length of the line is 14.4 centimeters. Each centimeter represents 10 miles. So we multiply that by 10 and that's our answer, 144 miles. Okay, so part B says, what is the bearing of Donhampton from Leek? So we want the bearing of Donhampton from Leek. So what we're gonna do is we've joined them up. So that's fantastic. We're then gonna get our ruler and our pencil and we're gonna draw a north line at Leek because it's from Leek. So we get our ruler and pencil and we draw a north line. Obviously here we've got north is going up. So we're gonna go up like so. So that's our north line. And as you can see, it's going up like the north line on, this, on the diagram. And we've been asked to write down the bearing of Donhampton from Leek. So we've got our north line. We've got the line joining them. Now we just need to measure the angle clockwise from north. So this angle here. So we need to measure the size of that angle. And once we measure the size of that angle, that'll be the bearing. That's the angle clockwise from north from Leek to Donhampton. So let's get our protractor. And in terms of protractor, you could either use a 180 degree protractor by putting the protractor, the cross of the protractor on Leek and the north line on zero. And if we do that, we get that's equal to, well, as you can see here, we've got zero degrees. And we're, so we're looking at the angles on the outside. We're going zero and then we go around 90, 110, 120, 130 degrees. So that's a 130 degree angle, 130 degrees. So that's a 130 degree angle. So that's a bearing 130 degrees. If we'd use our 360 degree protractor, we would have put the cross on leak, put the zero on the north line. And again, if we go round, you can see that that's 130 degrees. That's the, the size of the angle, 130 degrees. So that means the angle clockwise from north would be 130 degrees. That's the bearing 130 degrees. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number two. Okay, so question number two says, the diagram shows the position of Manchester. So here's the position of Manchester. I'm just gonna draw, draw that. So there's the position of Manchester and there's a north line. And we're told a scale that one centimeter represents 10 miles. We're then told that York is 60 miles from Manchester on a bearing of 055 degrees. Mark the position of York on the diagram. So first of all, we've got 60 miles. Now one centimeter represents 10 miles. So if we take the 60 and we divide that by 10, that's equal to six. There's gonna be six centimeters on our diagram. So York is six centimeters away from Manchester. And it's on a bearing of 055 degrees, so 55 degrees. So we're gonna get our protractor and we're gonna put the cross of the protractor on Manchester, so like so. And we're gonna put the zero, so this line with zero on it, on that north line. So there we go, we've got the cross of the protractor on Manchester there on that cross, and we've got the line with the zero on it on that north line. Now we wanna find where 55 degrees is, so we're gonna start here at zero, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 51, 53, 53, 54, 55, that's slightly longer line in the middle of 50 and 60, that's 55 degrees, so we put a little line or a little dash there. So that's the direction, York is somewhere in that direction. Now we know it's six centimeters away, so we're gonna get our ruler and we're gonna put the zero on Manchester and we're gonna line up the ruler with that little dash we done because that's 55 degrees. 
and then we're going to just draw a line so from zero to six centimeters going through that little dash so six centimeters will be there so that's where york would be york would be here and we're going to ask you to mark the position of york on the diagram so york's there and let's just label it york and actually if we wanted to we could just label there that's 55 degrees 55 degrees remember bearings have to have three digits so that's why it's zero five five because if it's less than 100 you have to put that zero in front and that's it we've finished our question we've marked the position of york on the diagram Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number three. Okay, so question number three. Question number three says, the diagram shows the position of two houses, A and B on a map. So we've got house A and house B on a map, and we've got the north lines on both of them. And part A says, measure the bearing of B from A. So it says from A, so we're measuring the bearing from A. So we want to find the bearing of B from A. And we want to measure the angle going clockwise from north to the line joining them, like so. So we want to measure the size of that angle. So let's get our protractor, and let's put the cross of the protractor on top of A and put the zero on that north line. So as you can see there, we've got that lined up. And now we want to measure the size of that angle. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 71, 72, 73. So that's 73 degrees. So the size of that angle is 73 degrees. Now we've been asked to write the bearing of B from A. So that's going to be 0, 073 degrees. It's important that if the bearing is less than 100, you put that zero in front. So it's 0, 073 degrees. And then if we read the rest of the question, we're told another house C is on a bearing of 170 degrees from B. So it's 170 degrees from B. And on the map, C is five centimeters from B. And we need to mark the position of C on the diagram. Okay, so the house C is on a bearing of 170 degrees from B. So let's get a protractor, it says from B. So we're gonna put our protractor on B. We're lining up the zero with the north line and it's on a bearing of 170 degrees. So we're gonna go clockwise around 170 degrees. So 10, 20, 30, there's 90, 150, 160, 170 would be down there. So that's a little dash there for 170, that's the direction. And so that means that C is gonna be somewhere along that line, because it's just 170 degrees going around clockwise from north at B. And we need, it's, we're told that it's five centimeters from B. So we need to do a five centimeter line going through that point. So let's line up the zero. So let's put the zero on B and let's line up the ruler with that little dash. And as you can see, it's just ever so slightly, five centimeters, it's just ever so slightly past the little dash. So that's it. So that's our cross there and that's where C is and that is 170 degrees and that's it we've marked the position of C on the diagram so that's 170 degrees and we've done a five centimeter line in that direction going from the cross through that little point just a little tiny bit further and put a little cross at where C is and that's it okay so let's have a look at question number four so question number four says Olivia has been asked to find the bearing of B from A and shown below is her method so this is her method and we've got A and B and Olivia's answer is 080 degrees. And I explain Olivia's mistake. So Olivia has obviously made a mistake and we need to find out what that mistake is. So Olivia's been asked to find the bearing of B from A. So from A, good, she's got the north line at A. And to find the bearing of B from A, we would then join them up and then we'd measure the clockwise angle from north. So we'd measure this clockwise angle going around that way, so that reflex angle. But as you can see, Olivia's actually measured the anti-clockwise angle. She's measured the angle going that way. Whereas actually she should have measured that angle there. So this, whatever that reflex angle is, and then that would be the bearing. So that's her mistake. So let's explain that. Okay, so I've just written down, Olivia has measured the anti-clockwise angle where she should have measured the clockwise angle. And just out of interest, let's find out what the angle should be. So if we have our 180 degree protractor, we can put the cross of the protractor on A. We can then see if we line up the zero on the north line, we can see there's 180 degrees so then if we turn it around and then measure the rest of the angle so that's zero there and then if we go around we get to 100 degrees so 180 plus 100 is equal to 280 degrees so the size of the angle or the bearing should have been 280 degrees also if you've got a 360 degree protractor you could put the cross on a and put the zero on the north line and as you can see, if we go round, we get to 280 degrees. So she has measured the anti-clockwise angle and not the clockwise angle, which was 280 degrees. So the bearing of B from A is 280 degrees. So let's write that. And that's it, I've just written down the correct answer is 280 degrees. And just another approach is, if she's measured that acute angle correctly, she could have subtracted that from 360 and then that would have given her the 280 degrees as well. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number five. Okay, so question number five says, Oliver's been asked to find the bearing of C from D. So the bearing of C from D. 
And shown below is his method. And Oliver's answer is 103 degrees. Explain Oliver's mistake. Now he's been asked to find the bearing of C from D. So if I wanted to work out the bearing of C from D, I would put the north line at D because it's from D. That's where you're starting from. And then I would measure the clockwise angle going around to the line joining C and D. So that would be that angle there. Now he's actually drawn the north line at C. So he's actually worked at the bearing of D from C, not of C from D. So let's explain that. And I've just explained that Oliver has measured the bearing of D from C and not of C from D. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number six. So question number six says, the diagram shows the position of boat B and of dock D, and the scale of the diagram is one centimeter represents two kilometers. So every one centimeter on this diagram is two kilometers. And we've been asked in part A to work out the actual distance between the dock and the boat. So here we can see the dock and the boat have been joined up already. So we just need to get a ruler and measure the length of that line. So if we put our ruler with our zero on D, the dock, we'll see that we get the length of the line. And the length of the line is, if we have a look here, I've got that's equal to 8.3 centimeters. That is 8.3 centimeters. So that means that the length of that line is 8.3 centimeters, but obviously the scale is one centimeter represents two kilometers. So if it was one centimeter, that'd be two kilometers. If it was two centimeters, that'd be four kilometers and so on. So if we multiply this distance by two, we can then find out what the distance would be. So let's do that. So if we take our 8.3 and multiply that by two, doubling 8.3 is 16.6, .6, that's 16.6 .6 kilometers. So the answer is 16.6 .6 kilometers and that's it. Okay, part B. Part B says measure the bearing of the boat B from the dock D. So we want to find the bearing of the boat from the dock. So from the dock, so we've got a north line at the dock, and we need to measure the angle going around clockwise to the line joining them. So we need to measure that angle, and then that will help us find our bearing. So let's do that. And you can either use your 360 degree protractor or your 180 degree protractor. So I'm going to put my 180 degree protractor here with a cross on D. I'm going to line up the line with zero at the top on that north line. And if we go round the outside here, we've got 10, 20, 30, 40. There's 90, 100, 110, 111, and 112. So I've got that angle is 112 degrees. So let's write that down. That's 112 degrees. So the bearing of the boat from the dock would be 112 degrees. Okay, and let's have a look at our last part. Our last part says a yacht Y is eight kilometers from boat B, from boat B on a bearing of 050 degrees. On the diagram, mark the position of the yacht Y with a cross X and label it Y. Okay, so we wanna show the yacht on this diagram. Now we know it's eight kilometers. Now remember one centimeter is two kilometers. So if we take the eight kilometers and we divide that by two, that tells how many centimeters it'll be. And that's equal to four, so that'll be four centimeters. So that means that Y is gonna be four centimeters from the point B. Now we just need to find out what direction. It says on a bearing of zero, five, zero degrees. So we've got our north line at B, which is fantastic. Now we just need to get our protractor and we're gonna measure that angle. So, so we're gonna put our cross to the protractor on B and we're gonna line up the zero on top of the north line like so. And we wanna measure a 50 degree angle. So we're gonna to go to zero, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 degrees would be there. So put a little dash there for 50 degrees. Then we'll move our protractor away and we wanna draw a four centimeter line in that direction. That's the direction the auto's in. So if we then put our zero on B and we make sure our ruler is lined up with that direction, that 50 degree angle, and then we need to draw a four centimeter line. So a four centimeter line would be there. So the end of that line, that would be four centimeters exactly from the boat B. And so that means that the yacht is there. And then we just label it Y because that's four centimeters. So that's eight kilometers in real life. And it's on a bearing of zero, five, zero degrees or 50 degree angle there. So that's a bearing of zero, five, zero degrees. And that's it. Okay, so let's have a look at question number seven. So question number seven says, the map below shows the position of two towns. So we've got Antrim and we've got Ballyclare and we've got the North Line. And part A says, find the bearing of Ballyclare from Antrim. So that's part A, find the bearing of Ballyclare from Antrim. So the first step is we're gonna join up those two towns. So here we've got the X for Antrim and Ballyclare is there. So we're gonna join up those two towns like so. So we've joined up Antrim and Ballyclare and we wanna find the bearing of Ballyclare from Antrim. So let's draw a north line at Antrim. So let's draw our north line at Antrim. 
So we've joined up Antrim and Ballyclare and we've drawn that north line at Antrim. Now we want to measure the size of the angle going clockwise from north to the line joining Antrim and Ballyclare. So get your protractor and if you use a 180 degree protractor it would look like this. Okay so we're going to put the cross of the protractor on Antrim like so and the line with the zero knot on top of the north line and now we want to measure the size of the angle so that's obviously the angle there. So we're going to start at zero and go around so 10, 20, 30, 40 all the way around to 90. 100, 110, 120, 130, 140, 145, and then we've got 146. So that's a 146 degree angle. So let's write that down. So that's 146 degrees, 146 degrees. And the question says, find the bearing of Ballyclare from Antrim. So it's gonna be 146 degrees. Okay, so we've done part A. Part B says, find the bearing of Antrim from Ballyclare. So we now wanna find the bearing going the other way of Antrim from Ballyclare. So again, let's draw a north line. So let's get our ruler and draw a north line at Ballyclare, like so. So that's our north line at Ballyclare. And now we wanna measure the angle going clockwise from the north line to the line joining Antrim and Ballyclare. So we wanna measure the size of that angle there. So that's a reflex angle. Now there's a few different ways we can get this answer. So I'm actually gonna start off with the 360 degree protractor because that's probably the easiest way. So you get your protractor, put the cross on top of Ballyclare, make sure the zero is on top of the north line. And then we're gonna go round from the zero all the way around to 180, all the way around, we've got then 200, 210, 230, 240, all the way around to 326 degrees. So this angle, going around, this reflex angle is 326 degrees. So what's the bearing of Antrim from Ballyclare? The answer is 326 degrees. And that's how we can find that bearing by using a 360 degree protractor. As I said, another approach would be to get the 180 degree protractor and to put it on top of the north line like so, to measure the clockwise angle going around to 180 degrees and then turn it around and this time put the cross of the protractor on Ballyclare again but make sure the zero now is lined up with the dot at the bottom and then go round to where the angle is so you go round and it would be 10 20 all the way around to 146 so we had 180 and then 146 so if we do 180 degrees plus 146 degrees all together that would be 0 plus 6 is 6 8 plus 4 is equal to 12 put a 2 down carry 1 and one plus one plus one is three. So it's 326 degrees. Another approach would be actually to measure this acute angle. And if you measure that acute angle, so putting the cross of the protractor on the X and put the zero along the north line, you find that that's equal to 34 degrees. So this acute angle is 34 degrees. And then if you do 360, the whole circle, take away 34 degrees, so minus 34 degrees, you'll find that that, 10 take away four is six, 5 take away 3 is equal to 2, and 3 take away 0 is equal to 3. So that's again equal to 326 degrees. So the bearing of Antrim from Ballyclare is 326 degrees. Okay, let's look at our next question. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number 8. So question number 8, we've got this diagram, and we've got A and B and a north line at A. And the question says, work out the bearing of B from A. And it says the diagram's not drawn accurately, so we're not going to be measuring this one. We're going to use the diagram and the numbers on it to help us. So we want to work at the bearing of B from A. So that's good. We've got north line at A. So we want to measure the angle going clockwise from north from the north line all the way around to the line joining A and B. So we want to find the size of that angle. And if we can find the size of that angle, that's going to be our bearing. Now what's great is we've got the line going down here and this part's 50 degrees. So that means that this part here will be 180 degrees because that's straight down. So that's going to be 180 degrees and plus 50 degrees. So if we do 180 plus 50, that's going to be the whole size of that angle. And then that'll be the bearing of B from A. So let's do that. So 180 plus 50, 0 plus 0 is equal to 0. 8 plus 5 is equal to 13. Put our 3 down and carry a 1. And 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. So it's going to be 200 and 30 degrees and that's the bearing of b from a okay question number nine says sam stands on point a so sam stands here at point a and we've got the scale that one centimeter represents 20 meters and we're told that sam runs 100 meters on a bearing of 290 degrees and we're to mark sam's finishing point b with a cross okay so he runs 100 meters so one centimeter is 20 meters so 20, 40, 60, 80, 1, that's going to be 5 centimetres because 5 lots of 20 is 100. Or we can just take the 100 and divide it by 20 and 100 divided by 20 is equal to 5. So it's going to be 5 centimetres on our diagram.
Now, we're told he runs in a bearing of 290 degrees, so we need to find out what direction he's running in. And so we obviously we can mark the right position on this diagram. Now, I, I do like these 360 degree protractors because they're really, they're fantastic for these questions, particularly whenever the angle's a reflex angle like this one. Because you can just put the cross of the protractor on A, like so, make sure the zero's going up along that north line, and then just go around 10, 20, 30, 90 degrees, 180, go straight down, around to 270, 280, 290. So that's the direction there. And I really like using those 360 degree protractors for those type of questions. So now um, you could have used a 180 degree protractor. And if you've done that, you would have actually put the cross on it like so. Put the zero along the north line like so. And then you put a mark at 180 degrees. Then you turn it around. Again, put the cross on A. Make sure the zero is lined up with the mark you've just done. And then you're going to go around to 110 degrees, which would be in that same position. So that's another way you could do that. I do like those 360 degree protractors. Okay, so we know that Sam's run in this direction and he's run a distance of 100 meters, which on our diagram is five centimeters. So let's get our ruler and measure five centimeters in that direction. So I'm gonna put the zero on A and I'm gonna line it up with that little dash that we've done. That shows us the direction he's, run, he's running. And then, as you can see, if we actually then just go across. And then if you see, and then if we go from zero in that direction until we get to five, we're gonna get there. And it's almost actually just on top of our point or just before. It. And we're gonna put a cross there. And that's where Sam's run to. And that's his finishing position B. And that's it. So we've done question number nine. Okay, so let's have a look at question number 10. So question number 10 says, the diagram shows the position of two cities, C and D, and we've got this diagram and we're told that one centimeter represents 100 kilometers. And part A says, work out the actual distance of D from C. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get our ruler and we're gonna join up C and D. So we'll join them up. And then once we've joined them up, then we can measure the length of the line. So we'll join them up, C and D. And then we'll get our ruler and we'll measure the length of that line. And so we'll put the zero, on C, and here we can see that we've got, yep, we've got one, two, three, four, five, five and a half, five point six, five point six centimeters, five point six centimeters. Now the scale included in the diagram is that one centimeter represents one hundred kilometers. So if it was five centimeters, that'd be five hundred kilometers multiplied by one hundred. So we're going to take the five point six, five point six, and we're going to multiply that by one hundred. And when we multiply by one hundred, we move all the digits two columns to the left. So the five will move into the hundreds, the six will move into the tens, and the answer will be 560, so 560. So the answer is 560 kilometers. So that's part A done. Okay, part B. Okay, so part B says, find the three figure bearing of D from C. So we want the bearing of D from C. So from C, so we've got the north line at C, and we need to measure the angle going clockwise from the north line until the line that joins C and D. So let's get our protractor, and you can use either your 360 or your 180 degree protractor. So I'm gonna use this one, the 180 degree protractor. And I'm gonna put the cross of the protractor on top of C, like so. I'm gonna line up the zero on the north line, like so. And then I'm gonna go around. So here we've got 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. Then we've got 71, 72, 73, 74, 75. And then it's just one more past that 75, so it's gonna be 76 degrees. So that means that that is a 76 degree angle, so 76 degrees. And the question says write down the three figure bearing. Obviously the size of that angle is less than 100 degrees, so we're gonna put a zero in front, so the bearing will be 0, 7, 6 degrees. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next part. Our next part says that E is southeast of C. So E is southeast of C. So remember we've got north, east, south, and west. So southeast to be in this direction, in between south and east, that way. And the question says to write down the bearing of E from C. So from C, so E is southwest of C. So if this was C and you had your north line going up north, E is in the southeast direction, so it's that way. So we wanna find the size of that angle going clockwise from north. So 90 degrees would bring us east. Then another 90 would bring us to south, that'll be 180. So the southeast is gonna be in between south and east. So that means that we're gonna go 90 and then another 45. And if we do 90 plus 45, that's equal to 135 degrees. So if you're traveling in a southeasterly direction, you'd be traveling on a bearing of 135 degrees. And that's it, 135 degrees. And it can be quite useful to know those bearings that north is zero, zero, zero. 
the east is 90 degrees, that's in 090. South is 180 degrees. West is 270 degrees. If you want to go northeast, that's going to be 45 degrees. That's 045 is a bearing. Southeast, well, that'll be 90 plus another 45, which is 135 degrees. Southwest, well, you've got 180, and then another 45 would be 225 degrees. And finally, northwest, and quite useful to know that as well. So west is 270, plus another 45 would be 315 degrees. So there you're bearing, so it's quite useful to know those. And then we're also told some more information about the city E. We're told that E is on a bearing of 190 degrees from D, and we've been asked to mark the position of E on the diagram. So we were told that E was on a bearing of 190 degrees from D. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw a bearing of 190 degrees from D. So it'll be that way somewhere. And also we were told that E was, it was southeast of C. So it was on a bearing of 135 degrees from C. And then what we'll do is we draw those two lines because we know the direction it is from C. Or we know the direction it is from D. And where those two lines meet or where they cross will be the position of E. So let's do that. So let's get our protractor. And um, so we're going to measure the 135 degree angle at C first of all, that bearing of 100. 135 degrees. So let's get our protractor, put the cross of the protractor on C. We're going to put the zero along that north line and we want to measure an angle of 135 degrees because we know it's south east, that's 135 degrees. So if we start at zero on the outside, we go around to 90, 130, 135 would be here. So we know that E is in this direction from C. Actually, let's get a ruler and draw a line to show it's in that direction. So E's in that direction from C. We also were told that it's on a bearing of 190 degrees from D. So if you have got your 180 degree protractor, you can then get your 180 degree protractor, put the cross of the protractor on the city D, line up the zero with the north line, and then we know that straight down is 180 degrees there, and then we can turn it around, and we can go another 10 degrees, so put the cross of the protractor on D again, line up the zero with the line you've just drawn and going over 10 degrees so we know that e is in that direction there so that means that e is in that direction from d it's 190 degrees alternatively you can get your 360 degree protractor put the cross of the protractor on d line up the zero with the north line and then you can see we've got the 190 degrees and that will be a much easier way to do it okay and then get your ruler and then obviously we're going to draw a line from d through that point because we know it's in that direction make sure you do the 190 not the 180 little mark and so we draw that line and where those two lines meet will be the position of e so e will be in that position there so that's where e is it's on a bearing of 135 degrees from c or southeast of c and it's on a bearing of 190 degrees from d and that's it Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number 11. So question number 11, it says the diagram shows the position of two airplanes, P and Q. So we've got P and Q. And the bearing of Q from P is 0, 7, 0 degrees. And we've got the 70 degree angle marked in there because it's the bearing of Q from P going clockwise from north. And we've been asked to find the bearing of P from Q. So you want to find the bearing going the other way. So if this direction is 70 degrees, so 0, 7, 0, that's the bearing. You want to find the bearing going the other way. So it's called back bearings. Now you can approach this in different ways. One approach is to consider we've got these parallel lines. So that means that these angles are what we call co-interior angles. This angle and this angle, they add together to be 180 degrees. If you've got two parallel lines and you've got a line joining them up like so, the angle here and here, they will be co-interior angles and they'll add to 180 degrees. So that means that this angle here would be 110 degrees. Now remember what bearings are. We want to find the bearing of P from Q. So we draw on the north line at Q and we want to find the angle going clockwise from north around to the line joining P and Q. So we actually want to find the size of that angle there, that reflex angle. So that's the bearing of P from Q. So you'll be going in that direction there. So if this angle is 110 degrees, considering your co-interior angles, if you then take your 360 degrees and take away 110 degrees, you get that that is equal to 250 degrees. So the size of that angle is 250 degrees. So it means the bearing of P from Q would be 250 degrees, so 250. And that's it. Now there is another way to approach that question, and that is using the fact that if you know the bearing of Q from P is 70 degrees, to find the back bearing, you just add on 180 degrees. So we can just add on 180 degrees onto 70. So we take our 70 and we add 180 degrees and that is equal to 250 degrees. So it means the back bearing is 250 degrees. So in terms of those back bearings, you can either consider your co-interior angles or consider the fact that if you know the bearing of Q from P, you can either add or subtract 180 degrees to find the back bearing. If the bearing you are given is less than 180 degrees, you can just add 180 degrees. But if the 
bearing you've been given is 180 degrees or larger, you can then take away 180 degrees to find the back bearing. So let's just check that. The bearing of Q from P is 70 degrees, so 0, 7, 0. If you add 180 degrees, you get the back bearing, which is 250 degrees. And if you had the bearing of P from Q is 250 degrees, if you take away 180 degrees, you get 70 degrees. So you can consider that shortcut whenever you're dealing with back bearings. Or as I said, you can consider the interior angles. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number 12. So question number 12 says, the bearing of C from D is 165 degrees. Calculate the bearing of D from C. So here you could do a sketch if you want to do, and consider your interior angles. I'm just gonna consider the fact that I know I'm either gonna add or subtract 180 degrees to find the back bearing, and then I'll show you using the interior angles. So because the bearing of C from D is 165 degrees, that's less than 180, I can just add 180. So if I take 165 and add 180, that would be equal to 345 degrees. So 345 degrees. So that means if we know the bearing of C from D is 165 degrees, the bearing of D from C would be 345 degrees. And that's it. As I said, you could draw a sketch if you wanted to, if you'd like your coins here angles and I've done sketches. You could say, well, the bearing of C from D is 165 degrees. So let's put D because it says from D. So there's D. We're told the bearing of C from D is 165 degrees. So if we've got our north line there at D, 165 degrees will be in this direction down here. So if we draw a little line in that direction, like so, 165 degrees. So there, 165 degrees. Then that would be C. And we could draw another north line like so. And then we want to find the bearing of D from C. So we want to find the size of that reflex angle. So let's consider our co interior angles. We've got our two parallel lines, the north line, the north line. So this angle and this angle will add together to be 180 degrees. So 180 subtract 165 is 15 degrees. And that means if we want to find the size of this angle, we'll take 15 degrees away from 360 and that's 345. So you could do your sketch like so and get that back bearing or just use the fact that if the bearing you've been given in the question is less than 180, you can add 180. If the bearing you've been given in the question is 180 degrees or larger, you can subtract 180 degrees. So let's have a look at our next question, question number 13. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number 13. So question number 13 says the bearing of F from G is 300 degrees. Calculate the bearing of G from F, so it's the back bearing. Now in terms of the bearing we've been given in the question, it's 300 degrees, it's 180 degrees or larger. So we want to find the back bearing, we're going to take away 180 degrees. So if we have 300 degrees, if we take away 180 degrees, that's equal to 120 degrees. So the back bearing, the bearing of G from F is 120 degrees. And again, let's just show that using a sketch. So the bearing of F from G, so from G, we're going to put G to begin with. The bearing of F from G, let's do our north line as well. The bearing of F from G is 300 degrees, going around clockwise to 300 degrees, so there's 270, so it'll be a bit higher, so it's in that direction. So let's call that there F, so that's F. And let's do a north line at F. And just to recap that, we've gone around 300 degrees, because the bearing of F from G is 300 degrees. Now we want to find the bearing of G from F, so it's going to be that angle there going clockwise from north to the line joining them. So if that's 300, this angle here would be 60 degrees because the angles at a point add together to be 360 degrees. And then we've got co-interior angles. We've got our two parallel lines, those north lines. So this angle and this angle add together to be 180 degrees. So if that's 60, that's 120. So that angle is 120 degrees. So the bearing is 120 degrees. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at question number 14. So question number 14 says, the diagram shows the position of two people, A and B, who are on the Duke of Edinburgh. And the bearing of person C, so there's another person C, and the bearing of person C from person A is 0, 062 degrees. So let's mark where that person is, so then the direction of them from person A. So we're gonna mark, draw that bearing of 0, 062 degrees. So there's A, we're putting the cross of the protractor on A, We've got the zero on the north line and we're going to go around 50, 60, 61, 62. So 62 is there. There's 62. And I'm going to go and draw that line because the person that's going to be a long person sees on that line somewhere because they're in that direction. And then we're told the bearing of person C from person B is 275 degrees. Now, if you've got your 180 degree protractor, you could do 180 degrees, put a dot, then turn it over, start at zero and go around. And you're gonna go around another 95 degrees because 180 plus 95 is 275 degrees. Alternatively, you could get your
your 360 degree protractor, which I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put the cross of the protractor on B, like so, and I'm gonna go around 180, so starting at zero at the north bank, going around 90, 180, 270 is due west. So 275 will be above that, so it'll be halfway between 270 and 280, that little longer line there, so that's 270 degrees. So that one was 62 degrees. And this line, if we draw a line from person B through that point, that's the direction that person C is from there. And we've drew that bearing, which is 275 degrees, so 275 degrees. So person C is on a bearing of 62 degrees from person A, on a bearing of 275 degrees from person B. And that means they're going to be here because that point where they meet, those two lines, that'll be where person C is. So that's it. So in the space above, mark the position of person C with a cross and label it C. There, we've done it. Okay, let's look at our next question, question number 15. Okay, so question number 15, it's very similar to question number 14 actually. It says, the diagram shows the position of two towns, A and B, and a rugby club, R, has a bearing of 110 degrees from town A. So it's going to be 110 degrees from town A. And the rugby club, R, has a bearing of 245 degrees from town B. And we've got to show the position of the rugby club. So let's do that. So it's on a bearing of 110 degrees from town A. So let's get our protractor, put the cross of the protractor on town A and the line with zero on it on the north line. And we want to mar measure a bearing of 110 degrees. There's zero, 10, 20, 30, 40, all the way around, 80, 90, 100, 110 degrees will be there. So that's 110 degrees. So if we then draw a line going through that point, obviously the rugby club's in that direction. So it's going to be somewhere along that line. It's going to be somewhere along that line. And that was 110 degrees, 110 degrees. That's the bearing. And then the bearing of the rugby club from time B is 245 degrees. And again, we could get a 180 degree protractor, put it on top of B, put the north line or put the line with zero on top of the north line and put a little dot of 180 degrees like so and then turn it around we've done 180 we need to do another 65 okay now i get the protractor put the cross of the protractor on b and line up the dot so that it's at zero and we want to go around another 65 degrees so um so we go around another 65 degrees all together then that will be a bearing of 245 degrees so that means if we get our ruler and we draw a line from time b through that point, that means that the rugby club's on a bearing of 245 degrees from time B. So it's in that direction. And actually, if you have a 360 degree protractor, that would have been a little bit easier, where you could just put the protractor with a cross on time B, the zero on the north line, and just go around to 245 degrees. Okay, so we're asked to mark the position of the rugby club. Well, it's in that direction from time A, it's in that direction from time B. So then where they meet that cross there, that'd be where the rugby club is. And let's label that R. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number 16. So question number 16 says, the map shows the position of a church and a school. So we've got a church and a school. And we're told the scale of the map is one to 10,000. So if you measured one centimeter on the map, that'd be 10,000 centimeters in real life. If you measured one foot on the map, it would be 10,000 feet in real life and so on. So that's the scale. And the question says, find the actual distance between the church and the school. So we're gonna join them up. So get our ruler and our pencil, and we're gonna join up the school and the church. So where the crosses are, like so, the little X's. And then we're gonna put zero at the beginning of that line. And we're gonna measure the length of the line. So as you can see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven and a half, seven point six, seven point yeah, 7.6 centimeters, 7.6 centimeters. So that's the distance on the page, on the map, 7.6 centimeters. So that means the distance in real life would be 10,000 times bigger. So we're gonna times this by 10,000. So we're gonna do 7.6 multiplied by 10,000. So that means we're gonna move all the digits four columns to the left. So the seven that's in the ones column will move into the tens, the hundreds, the thousands, and the ten thousands. So it's gonna be 76,000. So that's 76,000 centimeters. So that means the distance between the school and the church in real life is 76,000 centimeters. But we've been asked to give our answer in meters. Obviously, we typically wouldn't say the distance between a school and a church is 76,000 centimeters. So to change from centimeters into meters, we're going to divide by 100. So we're going to take our 76,000. We're going to divide by 100. So I'll move the, all the digits two columns to the right or take away two of the zeros. And that's equal to 760. So the answer is 760 meters.
Okay, and then in terms of part B, part B says find the bearing of the school from the church. So we want to find the bearing of the school from the church. So from the church, so we're going to then, we've joined them up already, and we want to measure the angle going clockwise from north around to the line joining them. So we want to find the size of that angle. So if we measure the size of that angle, that's going to be the bearing of the school from the church. So let's get our protractor. Again, you could use your 180 degree protractor. So put it down like so, put the cross of the protractor on the church, the zero on top of the north line, and 180 degrees would be there. Then you're gonna turn it around like so, and then put the cross of the protractor on the church again, and the mark where the zero is, and you're gonna go around to the line. So we had 180 degrees, and then another 70 degrees, because that's at 70 degrees going around. So 180 plus 70 would be equal to 250 degrees. So that means the bearing of those, that's 250 degrees. That means the bearing of the school from the church is 250 degrees. And again, if you go one of these 360 degree protractors, you can put the cross of the protractor on the church, put the zero on the north line, and you go around to 250 degrees. So the bearing of the school from the church is 250 degrees, and that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number 17. So question number 17, it's a, it's a non calculated question, and it says not drawn accurately, so we're not gonna be measuring any angles, you're using our protractors in this question, we're gonna just be looking at the numbers involved. So we're told that Gregory is at O, so Gregory's here, and there's two roads. There's a road towards A and a road towards B, so he's at this junction between these two roads. And B is due south of O, so if he goes due south of this point here, he's gonna be traveling towards B. And Gregory's here at O and he walks towards A, so he's here at O and he's going in this direction here. And the question says, what bearing does he walk? So he's at O and we wanna find really the bearing of A from O. So if I wanted to do that, I would draw a north line. So I would draw a north line like so. So that's the north line at O. And we'd measure the angle going clockwise from north around to the line. So we want to measure the size of that angle. Now here we've got a straight line. If you've got north and due south, that's a straight line. So if we do 180, take away 115, that's equal to 65 degrees. So that means that that angle there is 65 degrees. Now the bearing is measured clockwise from north around to the line, joining them. And so that's going to be 65 degrees. Obviously you want to give it a three figure bearing. So that's going to be 0, 6, 5 degrees. And that's it. And then we're told that Joshua is at A, so Joshua's here, and he walks towards Gregory, so he's walking towards Gregory. So Gregory's here, walking towards Joshua, and Joshua's here, and he's gonna to walk towards Gregory. So he's walking in the opposite direction. So we're doing the back bearing. We wanna find the bearing of O from A. So again, let's get our ruler and draw a north line at A. There's your north line. Now you could consider back bearings and just consider, well, if we know the bearing of A from O is 65 degrees, if we wanna find the bearing of O from A, you then add 180 degrees because that angle is less than 180. You could add 180 and that'll be 245 degrees. So then the back bearing would be 245 degrees. You might just learn that to so take the 65 and then add on 180 degrees to find the back bearing of 245 degrees. Alternatively, again, you could look at this diagram and consider co-interior angles. Here you've got two parallel lines, so there's two north lines. So if this is 65, this angle here, they will add together to be 180 degrees. So if we do 180 degrees, take away 65, that's equal to 115 degrees. So this angle here is 115 degrees. Now, we wanna find the bearing of O from A, so we wanna find the angle going around clockwise from north to the line joining them. So we wanna find the size of that reflex angle. So if we do 360, take away 115, that's equal to 245 degrees. So that is 245 degrees, as we worked out earlier. So that's our answer, 245 degrees. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number 18. So question number 18 says, the diagram shows the position of a port, P, and two boats, C and D, at 6 a.m. So these are the positions of a port, so a port's there, and then there's a boat here at C and a boat here at D at 6 a.m. And one centimeter represents 10 kilometers. So one centimeter on this diagram is 10 kilometers in real life. We're then told that boat C, so this boat C, sails on a course of 200 degrees at a speed of 15 kilometers an hour. And boat D sails on a course of 50, 0, 015 degrees, so 0, 015 degrees, at a speed of 35 kilometers per hour. And the question says, how far apart are the boats at 8 a.m.? So this is at 6 a.m. We want to know how far apart the boats are at 8 a.m. after doing this extra bit of traveling. And we need to give our answer in kilometers. So we're going to do this on the diagram. So let's start it off with boat C. 
it's going to travel on a course of 200 degrees. So that means it's going to travel on a bearing of 200 degrees. I'm going to use my 360 degree protractor here. Again, you could use your 180 degrees if you want to, but because that's a reflex angle, I'm going to use that. So it's going to travel on a bearing of 200 degrees. So we're going to draw a north line at C. Now with this question, because we're doing our north lines ourselves, they may not be exactly perfect. So whenever we look at our final answer, it may be slightly different because the north line might vary ever so slightly. And then as we draw the angles, then we might find that our positions are just slightly different, but the technique could be the same. And obviously whenever you're doing an exam, they allow you to be just slightly different. Or if you've got here, this north line drawn for you, then that's quite nice. So we're told the boat C, this boat sails on a course of 200 degrees at a speed of 15 kilometers per hour. Well, let's find the direction, 200 degrees. So that's our north line at C. And 200 degrees, we're gonna put the protractor on top of C, like so, and the zero on the north line. And then we're gonna go around to 200 degrees. So there's 180, 190, 200 degrees is there. So that means that boat C is traveling in that direction. Now let's find how far it's gonna travel. This is at six o'clock, 6, 6 a.m. And this is at 8 a.m. And it's traveling at a speed of 15 kilometers per hour. Now that's two hours. So two times 15 is equal to 30 kilometers. And we're told that one centimeter represents 10 kilometers. So it's gonna be three centimeters on the diagram. So I've lined up the ruler with the 200 degrees because that's 200 degrees, so that's the direction. We've got the zero on the X there for C and we're gonna draw a line that is three centimeters long. So three centimeters long, which will be there. So that's where C will be, this point here. So let's put a little cross there for where C is, a little cross there for C. And that's 200 degrees, 200 degrees. And that's 30 kilometers in terms of the distance in real life that it's traveled. Okay, now, in terms of boat D, boat D travels on a course of 0, 015 degrees. So we could use either protractor there. I'm just gonna use my 180 degree one. And we're gonna mark on this, this direction, 15 degrees. So we're gonna actually draw a north line at D to begin with, forgot that. So we draw a north line at D. So there's our north line at D. And again, those north lines, I think I've gone straight up perfectly, but if it's slightly out, it might affect our answer slightly. And we're gonna draw an angle of 15 degrees. So we're gonna put the cross of the protractor on D. We're going to line up the zero on that north line, hopefully. And then we're gonna mark on 15 degrees. So zero, 10, 15 would be there. So we're gonna go in that direction there, 15 degrees. And in terms of the distance, remember 6 a.m., 8 a.m., that's two hours, 35 kilometers an hour. So that's 35, that's gonna be two times 35. And two lots of 35 is 70 kilometers. So this boat travels 70 kilometers. So we're gonna get a ruler. And remember 70 kilometers would be seven centimeters. So we're gonna get a ruler and we're gonna put the zero on D. We're gonna line it up with that point and we're gonna draw a line that is exactly seven centimeters long. So that's exactly there. That's where the boat D will be at 8 a.m. So that's 6 a.m. and that's 8 a.m. And that was 6 a.m. and that's 8 a.m. So the question says, how far apart are the boats at 8 a.m.? So let's join up those boats. So here's where boat C is and here's where boat D is. And actually, if I join them up, it is 8.9 centimeters. So that's 8.9 centimeters on the map. But obviously in real life, one centimeter is 10 kilometers. So we're gonna multiply by 10, 8.9 times 10 is equal to 89 kilometers. So the answer is 89 kilometers and that's it. And that's it. So these have been the Code Maps practice questions on bearings. I really hope you found this video useful. If you need any extra help on bearings, if you go to the videos and worksheet section and you scroll down to video number 26, dedicated video tutorials there on bearings. Alternatively, you can scan this QR code. But in this video, I went through the video solutions to the practice questions. I really hope you found them useful. Just a few little tips. I do recommend getting one of each of the protractors just because I do find those useful for the 360 degree ones as well. Also, whenever you're dealing with bearings questions, just make sure you're being really accurate whenever you're measuring the angles. Be really accurate whenever you're measuring the lengths of lines in terms of distances and so on. And yeah, and I hope that's useful. Thank you. Cheers. Bye.